You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. Yahweh the Midwife I've talked in some of the previous podcasts about the theories that Yahweh the God of the Old Testament had a wife. Now I want to turn to a rather different question, but one that's perhaps related. And it's certainly related to the question of whether Yahweh, God of the Old Testament, was believed to be male, or at least masculine. Modern readers certainly believe that, but did the writers of the Old Testament expect us to believe that? In the Bible, Yahweh is closely associated with wombs and fertility. He opens barren wombs, and notice the he there, it's in inverted commas. Look at Genesis 29:31, talking about Jacob's messy family. When Yahweh saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb but Rachel was barren. Yahweh causes barrenness and the blessings of the womb come from Yahweh. Jacob blessing his offspring in Genesis 49.25 By the God of your father who will help you by Shaddai who will bless you with blessings of heaven above blessings of the deep that lies beneath blessings of the breasts and of the womb does this sound like a male god? I ask you. And if you think it's an isolated verse, look at Deuteronomy 7.13 or 28.4. No, people thought of Yahweh as a divine midwife. And in ancient Near Eastern society, midwives were doubly maternal. They were usually mothers themselves, though they were beyond childbearing age, and they assisted at births. And it was quite clearly a woman's role and quite clearly not a man's even though we may have male midwives today the Bible pictures Yahweh as a midwife responsible for fertility and therefore for birth but active in the process too God makes us in the womb for example Job 31.15 did not he who made me in the womb make them and did not one fashion us in the womb and again, that is by no means an isolated verse. Look, for example, at Jeremiah 1 5 or Psalm 139 13, and so on. And for the midwife bit, Yahweh brings forth from the womb. Psalm 71 6 Upon you have I leaned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. This is not a male God. And again, this is not an isolated phrase. It's one that's used elsewhere, too. I just chose the best example. I hope you're getting the point. These activities are not the activities of human males, and they aren't the activities of male gods. These are women's activities and the activities of goddesses. Yahweh, the God of the Old Testament, isn't a god. Yahweh is beyond gender. And now let's look at one of the best verses for talking about this stuff. Psalm 22 verses 9 and 10 or verses 10 and 11 in the Hebrew. Here's an over-literal translation. You took me from the belly, you kept me safe on the breasts of my mother. On you I was cast from the womb. From the belly of my mother, my God, you are. Notice the concentration of motherly words and language. Belly, there it becomes a motherly word because it's paralleled with womb and breasts. And notice how mother and God are intertwined in this verse. God here is not only the midwife, but is also intimately connected with the mother and the process of birthing. It's powerful and skillful poetry, and it underlines how for the ancient Hebrew writers of the Bible, God and birthing were intimately connected. This is not a male God. This is not a God, as opposed to a goddess. There'll be more about this in future podcasts too.